So welcome back to the shop, everybody. Today we're going to be reviewing the Aitzer 20 watt laser. I had promised myself I wasn't going to do another laser review. I get offers for them all the time. But this one being 20 watts kind of impressed me, and I have been desiring a stronger laser. So to start with, we're about to unbox this, but one thing I wanted to make note of, some of the best installation instructions I've ever seen. Look at this manual. Uh, as far as assembly goes and just a user manual, there's two of them there. Very, very well put together. I'm happy to see that. So the laser come in packaged awesome, nice, and uh, packaged as you expect something in this price range to be. It's all very beefy aluminum, assembled for the most part as far as all the belts and everything installed. Here's a little controller and display. You can run this particular model offline if you just want to run, say, a file off of an SD card. I prefer the computer and Lightburn software personally. The other thing I really like about this laser, it comes with air assist. When you're starting to talk lasers in this particular range, 20 watts, keep in mind, this is the most powerful I've ever used, you're most likely talking cutting, and air assist is an absolute must if we're going to be doing some cutting. The other thing I really wanted to mention, check this out. It come with all the hardware, it, you know, pre-packaged in the bags, listed step by step to go along with the steps in the manual. I really like the way they laid this out, really do. So assembly, straightforward everything laid out good to go the manual walked me right through it no point and boring you with that process everything's for the most part ready to go i didn't have any issues other than you're going to see here in a second there was one missing screw to tighten down what i call a drive shaft that drives both belts at the same time and i was very happy to see that they actually included some extra hardware so Cable management, another gripe I've had with some lasers in the past. This one come with simple stick-on cable management tools, but I really like how it keeps everything nice and out of the way. That's a big gripe I've had with some older lasers. There's the 20-watt head. Looking down the unit, this is the control board where you plug in all your cables, your emergency stop, and here's your belt tension down here on the end. Very easy to get to all this. Here is spare parts. I love seeing that included. Come with some extra screws and extra belt. And again, I'm glad it came with that screw because I couldn't find anywhere in the package this screw right here to tighten down on that shaft, that locking collar. You see the silver one I had to put in? It was missing. I would have been out of luck, but luckily the package came with spare parts. So very, very happy to see that. Right here is the air assist pump. I have it uh, ran up and down, and here is something that's a little bit of a gripe for me. This is where you plug your computer cable and power cable in. I don't really like the way that it sticks up out in the open like that. kind of interferes when you're pulling your work pieces in and out. It's something to be mindful of. I would love to see them over there on the side of this unit. That would be great. And here's a little control on the front. I don't know that I'll ever use it, but it's nice that they offer that. If you want to run this in offline mode, no computer, you can stick a little SD card in there with your files on it and run it straight from that piece. But again, I prefer the computer and light burn software. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a metal piece here so we don't burn it into the covering that I have and put down my kind of cutting spool board, whatever you want to call this. Another thing to note, this is your typical 400 millimeter board. Look how much bigger this unit is. That's been another gripe with lasers in the past. This is 430 by 430 millimeter cutting surface. So you can get a lot bigger, bigger work piece done with this. I enjoy that. So here I am kicking on the air assist pump. Very straightforward. You can turn it up or down. A must have again when you're cutting. This is some thin like one and a half to two millimeter board. We're just going to start out with this. We're going to do quite a few things in this video. Just testing it out. One other thing to mention, this is a little kickstand on the side right here. Obviously, Aitzer uh, listens to people. They just released this model a while back and I noticed it didn't have the little tab on the kickstand for you to easily grab it. The little window up front of the laser right there on the bottom, you couldn't see through and see yeah, where your laser was to line your project up. So they obviously listen to people because that's all been changed now. You can easily look through that glass and I can fire the laser and see how to line my work up. So let's test this out real quick. Just going to do some real quick cuts with this. Look at how fast this is cutting. This is the reason you upgrade to a 20 watt laser in my opinion. Most people want to cut thicker material. Diode lasers it realistically will only cut but a certain thickness material just before it interferes with the light passing through but speed is what it's all about that's why you go with a more powerful laser look at how quick this is just blasting around and cutting through and I'm just roughly playing with some settings right here I'm sure I could cut far faster than this the air assist also really helps with the cutting as well 
But that's what I'm hoping to gain with this. Faster engraving, faster cutting for small projects. See, it's nice clean cuts. Everything just drops right out. So far, I'm impressed. But let's move up to some thicker uh, material and kind of see what this thing will do. So looking over here, we're running 6,000 millimeters a minute at 40% power. Again, this is why you buy a higher wattage laser to get work done quicker. So 6,000 millimeters a minute right here. Let's do some quick engraving, show how fast that goes, and we'll continue to work up from there. Uh, I'll work up to 12,000. I think I even made it up to 18,000 millimeters a minute that day, and I got great engraving results. So you can see how fast we're going there. That's quite fast for a diode laser. Finishing up this little piece. This is the logo for our channel. Just want to show how fast it'll move. Very good detail and engraving. Let's flip this over and go, let's double the speed. Look right there, 12,000 millimeters a minute. I did up the power up to 80% since I'm moving twice as fast. Just rough settings. I mean, look at this thing going back and forth, back and forth. So I'm happy that I can get some work done a lot quicker now. Once I set up my hobby room in the future, I may run multiple of the same type of products or make some merchandise. So that's the 6,000 millimeter minute side. This is 12,000. Actually, it looks like there's even more detail there, and it may have a lot to do with adjusting the uh, power output as well. Okay. Everybody wants to know about how thick you can cut. This is three quarter inch solid pine board. Now keep in mind it's pine and it's solid. When you start doing hardwoods or playing with plywood, that makes a difference on how your cutting is. This is really pushing the limits for any kind of a diode laser. This is not what they're intended for. And you gotta understand as you're cutting through wood this thick, you're using a light emitting laser here. So as particles and smoke and everything is in the wood, well, it interferes with the light passing through. You can see I'm doing 100% power at 80 millimeters a minute, I'm just trying to cut a circle out of it. Long story short, I didn't get a clean cut through three quarter inch board, but I got very close to the point that I could see light going through and you could push the plugs out. I, I, and I got the same similar results with a 10 watt laser the last time I tested one. Again, this laser is definitely more powerful. You can see it, it's faster. But there's just certain limits you reach with diode lasers. If you're wanting to do thick wood cutting like this, I suggest get you a CNC router or something that's actually designed. The average person is probably going to be cutting 3 millimeter and 6 millimeter wood with a laser like this, which it does beautifully. And I, it won't have a problem cutting 10 millimeter or thicker wood. You can see right there in one pass it started to come through. I could probably push that out. But this is just pushing the limits for any kind of a laser like this. This is a second pass. I did two passes. And again, it's almost similar results. It's just the light's getting blocked, even with air assist. Too much smoke, too much particulate. So move over to some, this is six millimeter, I do believe. I tested three and six millimeter was the fastest I had. Look at how quick I am cutting right here. This is just flying through that stuff. I forgot the settings, but I'm cutting out a piece here on uh, their particular website. They give you free designs and graphics that you can cut out. And this is a giraffe, if I remember correctly. And you can do multiple layers. So I'm just running on a 12 by 12, 3 millimeter board. And look how quick I'm cutting the project out. This is by far quicker than I have ever cut with any diode laser. It's all about speed. So a few minutes later, everything's nice and cut. Lift the board up, pieces drop right out. They look awesome. You can see that little burnt area down on the left. That's where I forgot to turn on air assist. Air assist also really gives you nice, clean, smoke-free uh, look on your material. So on the far left, you see I painted the first cutout black. I'm gonna take some wood stain and we're gonna layer this with different colors. So do a dark wood stain first, then a light wood stain on the second piece. And no wood stain on the third, so you're kind of creating a 3D effect here. I don't really care about the drafts and all, just to be honest with you, but I'm showing how you can make some really detailed projects for the future. This is some stuff I may start doing for the house, but I'm thinking more home decor and all. So I'm start assembling the pieces, and you'll see it come to life. Now with the black and the stain piece, you can already see something when you add a third piece. Now look at the visual effect of stacking pieces. That last piece is probably a bit light. That's why your eyes are focused on it so much. But look at the detail and effect. 
three-dimensional. Pretty cool. Now this gives me some ideas for stuff in the house in the future. So another free design on their website that they gave. This is a lamp box. Actually, we're probably going to make some stuff like this for the house. So I cut out. You can make lamp boxes for like, say, Halloween and put candles inside and jack-o'-lantern look. You cut out your logo, a family name. These boxes just slide and lock right together. Again, this is kind of, you know, kiddie stuff in a sense as far as hobbies go, but it's fun stuff to do. You can see I have a little light that uh, you power up and stick right inside. And now you have a lamp box. So you could stain that, paint it, put whatever design in it you want. It's kind of really a neat idea and stuff that we may put around on like nightstands or end tables in the house. So here it is in a dark room with that little light going through. Again, just giving you ideas. These are all relatively simple projects for a laser like this. You can get as detailed as you want, building lampshades and pendant lights and all kinds of home decor, which is what I have planned for a laser like this. So here's something I really want to try. I'm wanting to get into acrylic work in the future. This is semi-transparent acrylic, extremely difficult to cut. You see all the A's on the bottom? Those are tests in the past from my 10-watt lasers. I've never been able to cut transparent acrylic. Now, dark acrylic that you can't see through like this is very easy to cut. You can do that with a lot of different lasers. So my settings aren't quite right. I, I did too slow, did some melting, but this is the first time I've ever been able to cut see-through acrylic. So that's already a good sign for this laser. It shows the power. There's another cut. Now we're getting cleaner, a little less melting. I'll keep playing with the settings there, but I have a lot of future plans for etched and cut out acrylic pieces. Glass. This is what everybody's always so curious about. Look at how quick I'm engraving the glass, actually etching the glass. This is what I use, cold galvanized compound spray paint. You have to put that on because this is a diode laser. It look, you know, it'll shoot right through clear glass. It has to interact with something. So 800 millimeters a minute at 100% power, and actually this is too slow and too hot. I wind up chipping some of the glass off. I'm thinking I'm going to be able to go up to like 1,000 or 1,100 millimeters a minute to frost and etch my glass. So I broke the piece. This is just a test piece. I cleaned the paint off, and look at the result. You actually see where some of it burned off because I'm burning too hot. I've never been able to etch glass that fast, and I know now I can go even faster. But look at the look. This is 8 by 11 picture frame glass, so now think about what we got going on here. You can actually etch picture frames, light them from behind, and look at the cool look that you can make. I've got a lot of ideas for hanging pictures in the house that are just frosted, or ones that you can put down on the table and actually illuminate from behind. If I can never get this hobby room done that I keep talking about, I'm going to build all kinds of cool projects like this for in the house. So something I've never tried before, rusty steel. Is this laser powerful enough to actually evaporate rust off of steel? I can think of some cool looks. Yes, it can do that. So I cut into it and I completely filled in a letter. And look at how deep that is. It actually burnt through all the rust and actually engraved into the steel itself. That gives me some ideas for some cool like rusty barn look decor for the house. I just burnt the mill scale off of this piece of steel and look at the bronzing effect it gave letters. Now this has also got my mind racing for some other fun projects for the house. So here's a final look at it. The thoughts, hey, I really like it. It's a nice clean package. I like the way they have everything set up. I wish some cables and things were moved a little differently. I love the huge working surface of this and the speed, y'all. That's the whole reason you upgrade to something like a 20 watt laser, that big laser head right there. My work can get done so much quicker now than it ever has before. I'm getting nice crisp clean cuts on relatively thick wood. I'm cutting acrylic like never before. So this is really going to speed my projects up. In the hobby room in the future, I'm probably going to have this unit set up for doing my cutting work like this and fast engraving. And then I'll have another laser set up for doing rotational work like tumblers and running a rotary. So overall, I really like it. Only just a couple minor gripes that you heard. The power's there. The speed's there. I really like this unit. I'm looking forward to what all I can build with it in the future.